Welcome to the first tutorial for creating a 2D platformer in Unity. Before I begin, I'll show you something along the lines of what you'll be creating. Probably won't go into as much quality with the tutorial, only because um, this is like a well thought out product that I was working on. So this is the game I put a couple of hours into. It's going to be something along these lines. So you have movement, you have accelerating, um, some sliding, because that feels good. There's some advanced mechanics in here. But the basics are all here too, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So you can jump over objects. Only on when you're on the floor though can you jump. You can wall jump up stuff. Pretty like fast paced um, platforming. There you go. You can slide down walls a little bit slower. And there's moving objects you can interact with and have an effect on you. There's also dashing. If you want to dash, you just press shift into a direction. You can dash, and there's diving too. If you want to like air stall a little bit, you can dash in the sky, it gives you a bit of a stall. All right, so let's make our own. I'm gonna use the project I used for the Unity Basics. So I'll load that up right now, and we'll start from scratch. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you create a new scene and you have nothing in it yet. We're going to start off by making some sprites. So let's create, I guess we'll use a circle. We'll use a square. And that's all I need for now. So let's begin by making some objects here. Let's make a platform. And we're going to make the platform be red. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use a color palette generator to create the colors I want. The link will be in the description or on my website for this color palette generator. It's pretty good for making some quick colors. All right, we're going to go with this theme right here. So to steal colors, I have two monitors, but I guess I will just do this for the sake of the video. If you want to steal a color, you just click on the little eyedropper here and you can steal whatever color you want. So we're gonna make the character be these lighter blue colors and we'll make, actually we're gonna make the platforms be these lighter blue colors and we're gonna make the, um, the actual character be the more green colors. So let's give our platform a hitbox, box collider, and let's call it platform. And now we're gonna take our platform and we're gonna drag it down into our assets to make it into a prefab. Now this is important because if we had more than one platform throughout the game and I said, I don't know, I don't like the way this color works, I can change the color of one, right, press apply, and now they're all that color. But I actually do like the color, so I'm going to set it back to what it was earlier. Also, um, prefab save stuff, you can't undo once you change one. That's kind of cool too, if your game crashed, you wouldn't lose anything. Or if your um, editor crashed. So we can put as many platforms as we want, but to stay organized, we're gonna create an empty by doing Control Shift N to create an empty, and we're gonna call it platforms. Now we're gonna drag that platform into our empty, um, but first we're actually gonna zero it out. So just to be organized, we'll start it off at zero. And now we're gonna drag the platform into the empty, and now we have this one grouping that carries all of our platforms. So we'll make a quick level. We'll add wall jumping in maybe, We'll start off with some simple platforming, like so. Maybe something like that, something like that. And if you fall, we'll make it so you have to wall jump out of it, maybe. Um, there we go. That's good. We'll do wall jumping up here. So like once you get here, you get a wall jump onto this platform, which will then be a long way over to here. And now over here, put the one like that, maybe. And our goal will be over on this ledge, right over here, be our goal. 
Might as well just drag this out and make them start over here. Okay, so this is our level. And the reason why I had you guys put everything within this empty is because now if we want to adjust the level, we can move the whole thing at once and it's just one big object. Okay, let's create our character now. We're going to make him a circle. Actually, should we make him a circle or a square? I guess we'll make him a square for the sake of it. No, 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 no. We'll make him a circle. We'll make this like a rolling type platformer. Okay. We're going to give him a circle collider and we'll make him be that turquoise color that we had. And just steal that. I feel like that blended a bit better. That's cool. And we'll give him some eyes, so we'll drop more circles, put it within him, call them eyes, give him some character, you know, make this one be a little bit that, make them both stretched. There's our character. And we'll give him some legs, I guess, probably we want some legs. So we'll call these two circles um, eyes, and we'll call this his leg, left leg and right leg. Kind of looks like a bug. Pretty weird looking dude. Control D is copy, by the way, if you're wondering how I'm doing that. So this will be our left leg, this will be our right leg. We're nice and organized. This is our little dude. We're actually going to make his collider be a box collider on second um, thought. So we can press edit collider, drag this down, kind of adjust it around his feet more so than his body, just so we don't get annoying collision that doesn't feel right. Let his body clip a little bit and we'll move that down to like there. Cool. This is our little dude. We're gonna call him Bug. So we're gonna make Bug a standard asset by just dragging him down here. And now we have a thing for Bug. I'm gonna make a folder called Prefabs where we can just store all of our different prefabs. So we have our platform and our Bug. Now our Bug's eyes are a little bit glitchy because they're actually not on the right layer. So we're gonna create a new sorting layer and call it um, Player and platforms. Players appear above platforms, so we put platforms below. And now our bug we can make on the players layer. And we want to make all these things on the players layer as well. Now the eyes will be ahead of everything else. He's looking good. Our level is coming together too, so let's put all of our platforms on that layer as well. And we can actually just press platform layer here and press apply and that will change every single platform in the level. That's the beauty of assets. So that's all standard now. Okay, so let's actually start coding I guess. We're ready to code him out. First we're going to need to give him a rigid body 2D. I'll double his mass. I mean, my bad, I'll double his gravity skill because I prefer that. And we're going to give him a new script. So we'll call it player, press enter, make sure it's C sharp for language, and now double click to edit the script. We'll let that load up. Okay, so for any new programmers, I'm going to speed through this and use a lot of terms. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the basic programming tutorial if it's up. I'm not sure if I uploaded it yet when this is up, but otherwise just try and keep up and just kind of copy what I do or make it your own. I actually recommend you make the code your own I'm not a big fan of um, video tutorials for making games just because people tend to copy code and all the outcomes are almost exactly the same. Let's try and break that trend. And instead of doing exactly what I do, change it a little bit, but just use the stuff I use. Use the same tools I use, but make different things from it. So to start off, we need to access our rigid body 2D, which gives us physics. So we're going to type in rigid body 2D, and we're called RB, put a semicolon. Our RB is going to be equal to get component 
rigid body 2D semicolon. So what that does there is it takes our bug and then it gets the component rigid body 2D from within his um, this game object, which is this right here. So now we are accessing this and only this. That's what that's referencing to. This specific instance, nothing more. So we can go back to our code now. And there are many different types of ways to move around. We can do um, a standard movement. We can do an acceleration like I showed you in the other video. But for the sake of this, we're going to stick with a standard movement because acceleration isn't that easy. I'll probably make an advanced platformer for acceleration. There are a lot of stuff, a lot of things going on when you have a character that accelerates kind of like in Super Mario 64. It's a lot more than just, you know, you press a button, you get to a set speed. So we're going to do exactly what I just said. You press a button, you get to a set, seat, set speed. So take our rigid body, take our velocity, and we're going to set it equal to a new vector 2, which is something with two dimensions to it. And that's going to be, first one will be our x, the second one's our y. So our x is going to be um, our axis, so get axis, input, my bad, input dot get axis horizontal, which is the horizontal axis. So when we press, um, that's our inputs for A and D. A, A, D is horizontal, W, S is vertical. It also takes your arrow keys, and um, you can edit these settings in the Unity um, editor. But basically, when you don't press anything down, you have a zero for horizontal axis. When you do press something down, say the D key, you get a one and everything in between. And when you press the A key, you get a negative one and everything in between. It's kind of like a virtual joystick where it's analog, but not really, because your keyboard's actually digital. But we're going to do that times our speed, which doesn't exist yet, but we're going to make it exist with a public float called speed. Okay? And our y is going to be our rb.velocity.y. Because when we move left and right, it shouldn't set our velocity y. We're just passing through whatever our velocity it is when we actually are setting our speed. So y won't be affected, but the horizontal speed will be affected. Okay. So now when we move, it will set our velocity, or it should. Unless I forgot to do something. I don't look like I'm getting errors. Right, I forgot to set the speed. That's the problem. So if we go down, I made it a public float for a reason. So now we can set the speed in our component. So now when we try and move it, the speed is zero. It's not going to work. But if we adjust our speed, we have movement now. So there you go. We can't move past this wall here. Get like a nice bump into it. That's all we could do. So you can adjust your speed however you want it to be. I'm going to make it probably four for the sake of this. I mean, it's not bad. When you let go, you do get a nice smooth glide from the friction. And when you press down, you do accelerate to that speed a little bit. It's not really acceleration, but it feels like it, which is fine. So that's what that is. Now we're going to do some if statements. So if our um, if our input dot get axis horizontal If this is less than zero, that means we're moving left. In that case, we want to take our transform.local scale and set that equal to a new vector to of negative one, 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 and semicolon. Otherwise, we want to take our transform.local scale and set that equal to a new vector to of one, 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 semicolon. So what this means is we're taking our, depending on if we're going right or left, we're taking our local scale up here and setting it either to this or this. So we're either deciding flipped or not flipped. That's what that does. If for some reason your character is scaled, you just have to adjust it. Like say his normal size is two, like that. I would make the numbers be two, you know, negative two and so on and so forth. But they're one, so we don't have to worry about that. Also, it looks like I'm getting, oh, I said vector 2, it should be vector 3, because we're working with transforms here, and they have three dimensions to them. So now when I play, we're going to get some good old movement with turning. So now, based on which way we're going, we turn. Um, I actually also want to make it be an else if here. 
And the reason for that is that way we don't turn back into the other direction when we're not pressing anything. Because these axes zero out as zero. So if it's less than zero, we're facing left. If it's greater than zero, we're facing right. If it's zero, meaning we press down no keys, there is no change. It's whatever we last were. That's the logic of it. So we move right, we're good. We move left, we're good. And that's that. Let's add some jumping in. So I think there is a standard axis for jump, but just for the sake of it, I will show you a different way to take inputs in. So you can use the input manager by Unity, or you can do this way. So input dot get key, get key, it will be true for every frame you're holding down the key. Get key down will be true. The frame you press down the key, get key up will be true. The frame you let go of the key. We're gonna do get key down. And we're gonna get that key code. And once you type in key code and press the period, we have every single key imaginable, including Xbox controller keys, which are joystick numbers. And then we have each player individually. So we have joystick two, joystick three, joystick so on and so forth. So we're gonna get down the key code space, which is our space bar. And now we will make it so when we press space, as you guessed it, our velocity will change. We can make this a force, we can make it so it adds a force, or you can make it a velocity. I'm actually going to make it a force, just so I can show you guys how to use add force. So adding a force is completely different from setting your velocity. Adding forces is recommended. I don't recommend you set your velocity, other than this tutorial, because I'm just trying to be simple and keep things simple. But otherwise, you should always try and add a force, because that's how the real world works. You can't just set a velocity in the real world. The reason why I say that is because it will conflict with so much stuff in your scene. For example, if your character has a certain force of something and there's an object in front of you that's a really heavy mass, by setting his velocity, he'll be able to push that object regardless of its mass. Whereas if you set a force, it will actually take into account how heavy he is, how hard he's pushing on it, how fast he's accelerating, how far it should go. So by using set velocity up here, by just setting this velocity value, we're limiting the physics engine, but at the same time, it's a lot simpler for a simpler platformer. And that's what we're making right now. So maybe at the end, I'll change that up to make it an add force. But for now, that's what it is. So we're going to add a force. Unlike set velocity, we can put zero and it won't add anything onto it. If we set the velocity for the Y over here to zero, you just wouldn't fall because your velocity in the Y direction would always be zero. You would just stay still in the Y direction. So we're going to set that to zero, and we're going to call it jump force, which will be a new public ah, public float float jump force. Okay, so now we can adjust our jump force and the space key and so on and so forth. So let's look down here. We have our jump force. We'll make it 20 for now. Forces are different from velocity, by the way. Keep that in mind. Forces need to be higher because there's stuff they don't take into account. So we're actually going to make this into 100. We're still barely getting a jump there. Maybe 200 will be the number. It's still not feeling it. We'll make it 600. That's way too much. 500. Too much. 350. That's the one. I'm feeling it. That looks good. Not really. No, not quite. Make it 370. Mm, maybe 400. 400, and that's final. We're gonna make it 400. Maybe. Yeah, 400. Okay. So as you noticed, my character fell on his side, and we don't want that. So we're gonna set this constraint over here to freeze rotation in Z. So now when we play the game we can't rotate in the direction of Z. So if we walk over here and try and knock ourselves over, it cannot be done. Sweet. So now that we have our rotation Z locked, we can work a little bit more on our character. Um, I'm actually, after all that talk on how to do this in this way, I'm going to change it to a acceleration way. I know, I'm sorry. So we're going to need for acceleration our um, rate of acceleration, so our speed, and our um, maximum speed, which will be our max speed. 